Hey, what's up everyone? Um, today we're going to be looking at airbrushing. Uh, this is the second part. Uh, the first part I posted recently on my channel, so check that out, uh, where I'll explain all what I'm doing. But uh, here you'll see I'm going to be doing some airbrushing. I've got everything set up. Uh, just that's the compressor. That I've shown you the airbrush. That's the thinners, and we've got our surface primer on the background. Um, and we've got a few other little bits and pieces which I'll be explaining later on but just to say now they are we've got some cleaning materials, we've got a little spanner and some pipettes, some water and a paintbrush. Uh, always use an old knackered paintbrush uh, it's just for mixing the thinners and the paint together you don't want to kill a nice paintbrush uh, you also need some um, mixing pots um, I should really clean these out but uh, always forget. Uh, so yeah, just a mixing pot. Uh, give your Vallejo surface primer a good old shake. Um, make, I'm still shaking. Uh, there you go. Uh, open the cap uh, and it's got a little pory thing so you can literally just squirt it straight into your pot. don't know if you can see that. And uh, So we've got some in there. Now some airbrushes you can run this straight through. Uh, any nozzle size bigger than 0 0.3 you can, uh, you can just use the surface primer. Um, I like to thin mine ever so slightly. Uh, probably a 1-1 one, one mix um, of thinner. So, or maybe just less. Maybe less thinner than the, um, the paint. And uh, I didn't put much paint in there but because I, I, I'm only going to do a small amount of airbrushing. So I think that would be okay. Uh, using your old knackered paintbrush, give it a good old mix. It's not terribly exciting. Uh, maybe you can't really see it because it's black. And But yeah, I'm basically making sure it's all mixed in. I'm turning the pot as I'm doing it just to make sure it all gets mixed in nicely. Even though it's an old brush, you might as well clean it. You can see here, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a clean. And dry it off. Right, so, onto the airbrushing. Uh, here you can see I've got my uh, cleaning pot, which I'm doubling up as an airbrush holder. Uh, I'm just going to pour my mix, my thinned black undercoat into my airbrush. Uh, this airbrush I mentioned uh, what it is uh, in the previous video uh, but it's a gravity feed so that little um, cup on the top uh, uses gravity to feed it into the uh, airline. We're now ready to airbrush. Make sure you're wearing a dust mask or a respirator to protect your lungs from dust particles. Right, we jumped there because I had a little bit of an accident. I actually spilt water everywhere. Um, so we've turned the airbrush on and uh, we're just letting the pressure build up. You can see my compressor moving across the desk there. It does that all the time. Um, I've got foam under it, I've got cork, it still does it. Um, you can bolt them down and stuff like that or you know I'm yet to find a solution. So. Um, uh, answers in the uh, comments. If you've got any solutions on how I can stop my compressor running away from me, that would be uh, greatly appreciated, please. Um, so, right, we've, we've jumped straight into the airbrushing now. Um, you can see it's not as fast as using an aerosol. An aerosol will hit the whole area in one go. Um, the airbrush is more precision than that. It's you can get right into nooks and crannies. It's almost like using a paintbrush, um, but a bit faster than a paintbrush, and uh, with far superior, smoother results. So um, you just take your time, you work your way around the model, and just add in a little bit more. Uh, you can see there I was just um, pulling back the needle in the airbrush. Um, that just ensures it doesn't clog up. Occasionally you want to like spray, stop, let the pressure build up, spray, stop, let the pressure build up and um, that will help. Um, see my airbrush compressor doesn't have an air tank. Uh, that means um, I have to let the pressure build up in the uh, in, in the airline. Um, if I had an air tank att attached to my compressor it would build up pressure 
in the air tank and then I'd just use that air from the tank and it would constantly top up the air tank and I wouldn't actually notice a lack of pressure. Um, it's definitely definitely worth getting that one if you're new to it and you're choosing one. Um, I sadly bought mine before I knew about air tanks and my compressor has been going for ages probably about seven or eight years now and I kind of don't want to replace it it's, it's like my good old workhorse of a compressor it's still going strong so um, I'm quite happy with it so uh, I don't do a lot of airbrushing to be honest uh, it's mainly undercoating uh, base coating um, occasionally I'll work on some larger projects like um, drop pods and Imperial Knights and uh, my Thunderhawk gunship, that, the airbrush was great for that. It's such large flat panels I can use to get the base coats down, uh, shade with it, uh, give it a light dust in to blend the colours in, uh, mask off areas with uh, masking tape and then lay some different colours down. Uh, fantastic. The airbrush for big kits is brilliant. Um, anything with like large flat sides, you're going to get a real benefit out of it. Uh, see here I'm just uh, doing a bit more and you, you, you can see it takes time it's not fast um, you want to make sure you're getting every single nook and cranny so and there you go so that's the undercoated model uh, it dries really quickly in about five or ten minutes that would be good to go you could you could paint straight on top of that so it probably dries a bit quicker right so we've done our airbrushing uh, undercoating as you can see I've undercoated the remaining models of the Deathwatch squad that I need to paint. Uh, now we're going to do some cleaning. Uh, so I've got my cleaning wires, I've got some tissue, I've got my water, and I've got a little pipette. So uh, this is the reason I don't like airbrushing. Um, the cleaning takes just as long as it does to airbrush anything. So I'm going to show you now how to clean, thoroughly clean, an airbrush. So, I've got my cleaning pot, uh, as you can see, first thing to do is just tip out any paint that you haven't used back into your mixing pot. Um, you, if you've got screw, screw top lids for these, you can actually screw them down and use them later just by thinning them out again. So, don't worry if you make up too much paint, because you can um, uh, reuse it later on. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using a piece of tissue uh, to get some of the paint out. Uh, the more you can get out of the cup this way, then the less hassle you're going to have trying to blast it through the airbrush. So uh, you can see here I'm getting more on myself than I'm actually getting out of the airbrush. Um, now I'm just going to blast whatever's in there into the cleaning pot. Not terribly exciting. You can see the, the pressure's probably dying here. So you can see here, no, nope, still black coming out. So we'll do some more. This is like phase one. Phase one is where you just want to get out as much of the paint in there as possible. Um, and this surface primer is really, whilst it does go through the airbrush, it's got undercoat properties, so it's hard wearing. It's meant to like cling to a model, um, and it clings to an airbrush, so cleaning normal acrylic paints that have been thin is easier than cleaning um, one of these undercoat sprays because these undercoat sprays are really clingy and quite thick and you can see there I've just opened up the air, airway a little bit and I've adjusted the stop on the back of the airbrush so that will open up the airbrush right you can see here hardly anything's coming out now we're ready to clean it <laughs> so we haven't even started now. So phase two, we're going to push some water through it. So just fill up the uh, the gravity-fed cup with water, like so, and then back in the cleaning pot. Oh, actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the lid off, and I'm just going to pour. And look at the water; it's black. So even though nothing was coming out of the airbrush there's still stuff in there and it's black. I'm putting clean water in and black is coming out. So we, so this is phase two we're just going to um, carry on trying to get as much out as possible. Now we're going to 
hold a piece of tissue over the front to block it, and then we're going to push the gravity, uh, the dual action button down and back, and we're going to get some bubbles. Um, now that what that's doing is that is back blasting the water back up through the cup. So it's taking any specks and flecks of paint with it, and it's so it's blasting it out of there. So that helps cleaning. So that's really good. Um, if you're using color after color, that's a good quick way just to blast out any paint that's in there before you load in the next. So that's a top tip there. Make sure you um, hold tissue over the nozzle and blast the paint back. So that so so far we haven't we've been taking stuff in phase one and two we've been taking stuff out the top of the cup. Now phase three we're going to blast it out through the nozzle. And that's what I'm doing. I'm emptying the cup now into the cleaning bottle by pulling back the dual action button and pressing down so we're getting air and water blasting out. Can't really can you see that? It's emptying. That was full, that's almost empty now. So I think now what we're going to do is phase four and we're going to strip the airbrush down. So I've just taken the guard off the front. Now I'm taking off the airline. Make sure you turn the compressor off before you do that. And as you can see, everything's just finger tight. We don't over tighten airbrush parts. They're all so small and fiddly, we need to be really careful. Okay, we're going to wipe some black undercoat off of there, clean up the needle and the nozzle. We're going to undo the back piece, which will show the back end of the needle and the locking nut. Uh, undo the locking nut, and that will allow you to release the needle. See, even though no paint was coming out of it, you can see the needle has paint clung to it. So we're just going to wipe that off. And now using that tiny spanner I showed you earlier at the beginning of the video, they, these uh, spanners come with the airbrush, just use it to release the nozzle. Now if you drop this you're going to have a hard time finding it so be very careful and put it somewhere um, safe so you don't lose it. Okay, with our pipette of water, watch the colour of the uh, paint that comes out, black, it's still black. So even after phase one, two and three, we're still getting black paint in there. So we're going to repeat this a couple of times. There we go. So we're getting white, uh, that's now like water coming out there, so that's great. Give it a shake. There you go. I think I'm just using some tissue. Sorry, I'm just off. There you go. And that's it. Just dab it all off. Now, using the cleaning brush, pick one which will fit into the barrel of the airbrush and push it in. And we just want to like wiggle it about, move it backwards and forwards, get some paint out, dab it off onto. Look, still black. Dab it off onto a tissue and repeat a couple of times. Uh, if you're quite methodical with your airbrushes and you do go through this routine every time you use it, it will last a lot longer. You'll get less clogs, you'll get less hassle, it'll be ready to use the next time you want it, all you've got to do is chuck paint in it. It's always worth spending that little bit of time just um, cleaning it. So we just run some more water through there. I'm happy with that now, we're getting clear water. So next we're going to clean the nozzle. There's some black paint on the back of the thread, so we're just going to take that off with a tissue. And the next piece you need to be very careful with. So we're going to use a not we're going to use the needle to clean the nozzle. So you want to be very careful 
not to bend the tip of the needle. But what we're trying to do here is, any build up of paint flex in there, we just want to push out. Can you see that? That is built up paint in the nozzle. And I've managed to release that. Now that builds up quite quickly. After just um, undercoating five models, you can see that's built up and semi-dried in there. So you want to clean your airbrush as quickly as after you've used it, just so it's easier. Because if you left that to dry, that would be an absolute nightmare to get off at a future date. Uh, this is the airbrush nozzle guard. It gets a build up of paint on the inside. So just use another brush, cleaning brush, just to clean the inside of it. This isn't a deal breaker, this. You could leave it, but after a while you would get a build up of paint. So it's just nice to keep things nice and clean. This bit goes over the nozzle, and it's just got a bit of black paint on the front of it. So we're going to take that off using a brush. Okay, it's not too bad. A little bit more. You could pick at it with your fingers or a knife or whatever, but I had the brushes to hand. Uh, and then using the wires, pick one that will fit through and just poke that through like that. And that will clean that piece as well. Okay, so quite happy with that. I think everything's cleaned, so we're going to rebuild it now. First thing that goes on is the nozzle. Just screw that on. Um, just use that, just to turn, once you've got your finger tight, just go half a turn with it. Maybe a bit more than half a turn. You just want to feel it till it nips, and that's enough. This one is uh, just finger tight. It's just got a grip around the edge that you can just go there, finger tight, boom. And this is the guard, so that goes on as well. Okay, make sure the locking nut's undone. Make sure your needle's clean. Don't forget we was using it to clean the nozzle, so you want to make sure it's clean. And be very careful not to bend the tip. Make sure that's down, because you don't want to go into the back of that button and bend the tip and just if it's not going don't force it take it apart have another look at it but it's all about maintaining a straight tip there you go look at that smooth as you like um, so I'm really pleased with that that's come out great I'm just going to put the back piece on now that just screws in Attach the airline. I've done this so many times, this is the fastest way to do it now, just spin it. And there, done, clean airbrush. Uh, last thing to do, uh, I always do this, probably don't need to, but I like to. Um, I'm just going to run some water through it, actually, so I'm going to move those so they don't get wet. Fill up the water cup, or the paint cup. Didn't pick up anything there. Try again. There we go. One more. Excellent. And uh, hopefully we should get a clean spray. Let's just have a look at that. Bingo. Pure water. Nice clean airbrush. No clogs. Nothing. Excellent. So we just empty out all the water from the cup, keep pushing the needle backwards and forwards and uh, we get a nice satisfying result of having a lovely clean airbrush ready for next time. Just tip it out, make sure there's nothing in there and we're done. If you like this video please subscribe or give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm new to this, I want to do more so let me know if you want to see more, maybe give us some ideas of what you want in the comments and uh, I'll throw some links in the description of uh, where you can find out more info, uh, follow some of my work and stuff like that. Uh, thanks once again 
And uh, that's it for me. See you later.